up, guys? It's me, it's Mary. <laughs> Sorry, I have a hair in my mouth. For anyone who is new to this channel, and but basically, I'm asexual and I'm bi. These labels really are the best things that describe my experiences of attraction. Like many, I experienced a lot of, uh, shall we say, intense admiration growing up for various women, whether they be fictional or otherwise. I thought I would make a video about the fictional slash celebrity ones that I grew up admiring a little too much for someone who was straight. <laughs> Number one. So I think if you know me IRL, you probably have a good idea what I'm about to say, and that is River Song. River Song was a character in Doctor Who played by Alex Kingston, and she is the Doctor's um, wife. She's also an archaeologist and a professor, and a whole bunch of other things that we probably don't know about. Like I am obsessed with River still to this day. But when I was 15, 16, I was super like super super duper like I literally had Alex Kingston as my background on everything and I had like a shitty little like slide phone still had her on my, as my background on that Google image this was before I was on Tumblr too so I used to just search images for her on Google like in my spare time um for anyone who didn't actually watch any seasons of Doctor Who that she was in in season six which is sort of her main season where she has her main character arc in the original trailer for it there was a cut scene where it was implied that River wasn't wearing any clothes. I remember thinking, like, oh, wow, I can't wait for that scene. When it was not in any of the episodes, someone asked, like, Stephen Moffat, like, why was that scene cut? And he said, oh, you know, because Doctor Who's a family show. And I remember being so devastated. justified it to myself by saying, I really just love River and the Doctor, and I'd love for them to have a scene like that. It had nothing to do with them. I, I really, I just wanted to see Alex Keaton. <laughs> And I'm currently listening to The Diary of River Song, which is the radio program that the BBC produce that's like a spin-off series for River. Uh, still thinking about her, I'm just like, I love her so much. So yes, River Song number one. Number two, uh, well look, I mean, look, we're, we're, let's not be Irene Adler. And any actress who played the character, like I instantly was obsessed with. After I saw the Sherlock Holmes movie, I downloaded all of Rachel McAdams films and I regret that because I hated that movie, The Notebook, and I still hate it. Whoa! <laughs> Hi, ghost. How are you? Ghost, you're interrupting the filming. What are you doing? What? <laughs> Always stealing my sunshine. What's happening? What? So Ghost is now uh, cleaning his bottom next to me while I make this video. You all apparently needed to know that. Oh, where was I? Oh, Irene Adler. Okay, so when BBC Sherlock Series 2 came out, because that was like 2000 and that was so long ago. When Series 2 came out and the scandal in Belgravia was like the first episode of the series, I was still at school. I was pretty good at keeping on top of my assignments back in the day, so I had no homework to do in my free period so I, I took the episodes to school with me and I watched them on my laptop and I remember watching the scene where she was naked all the boys that I was friends with like they were watching like over my shoulder and they were like Miss, I didn't realize you were into this and one of them was like wait so would you like totally go lesbo for that chick and I was like um yeah hello like she is so hot but thinking like yeah, but that's like a totally normal thing, right? And they were like, no, 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 like, honestly, she's like a five or a six on the babe scale. I was like, get out of town. She's an eight. And it was just like one of those conversations. I'm very lucky, like, characterized my experience sort of growing up, being attracted to more than one gender. Never really was stressed about it. I never felt ostracized because of it. I've experienced more ostracism now that I more confidently identify with it than I ever did, just sort of being a kid. I never really did that, like figured it out, like it was always something that I knew and I think instinctively a lot of my friends knew it as well. And I never really had a coming out moment, now I just sort of say what I'm thinking and if they don't accept it then that's not my problem. And I'm very lucky that I live in a circumstance where that's possible for me and I know that there are a lot of people that aren't. But tangent, anyway, I love Lara Pulver and I still do love Lara Pulver. The amount of shitty art house films I have watched just so I can see her beautiful 
face and bone structure is is insane. So Lara Buller is Irene Adler, but Irene Adler in gen general is number two. Number three, Gabriella Montez. High School Musical was everything to me. Everything. And it still is. I love High School Musical. There is a, not a month goes by where I don't watch at least one of the films. I remember seeing it for the first time and I was literally, I felt moved. Wow. That is cinema. That is why cinema was created. And I remember being extraordinarily obsessed with both Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens and spe specifically with Vanessa Hudgens once again kind of like with the River Song situation I had pictures of Vanessa Hudgens all over my room I bought every magazine that had her on the cover I was just so, so in love with her and I didn't realize because I was just so in the heteronormative state, man. I'm in the mindset that I thought this was how everyone was. I thought everyone just got these random obsessions with with women and, and, and that was just the normal thing. A new slash guys, not everyone does do that. It wasn't until I was older that people started pointing out, uh, Mary, I think you're gay. I still watch anything that Vanessa Hudgens is in. Like, she is just so beautiful. I think it was last year she put up this video on Twitter of her, like, just having a good time in this amazing one-piece swimsuit. Still think about that video just randomly. And I feel like High School Musical, if I had been more aware at the time, uh, was probably my bi awakening in a way because I was obsessed with Vanessa Hudgens and Zac Efron. Shout out to Vanessa Hudgens for being beautiful. <sighs> Number four. This was like a character that sort of helped me to realize that what I was experiencing in these intense admirations of women was probably more likely like actual romantic attraction. Just a, a general, you know, one of them weird intense admiration things that I thought people got. And that character is Anara Sarah. Firefly was the first thing I'd ever watched that had anything where bisexuality was, was brought up and a character sort of explained their feelings and I could relate to those feelings. There's an episode of Firefly uh, where Inara takes on a client. For anyone who doesn't know, she is a companion, which are emotional and physical and spiritual companion. There is an episode where she has a client and they find out that the client is a woman. And the, everyone on the ship is kind of surprised, um, but most of the episode like focuses on Inara and this woman. She sort of says to this woman, like, I am open to any client because for me, it's just about that deep connection. I remember actually having that feeling. I understand exactly what she means. Inara for me was one of those characters, it's not that I ever thought I was alone but it's nice to know that it wasn't all in my head if you know what I mean. Five, um, this one is like specifically if I have any other Australians watching. Honestly I talk to Australians that have never seen this show but I honestly can't think of where else you would have seen it. But there was a show that was on in the really early 2000s called Ocean Girl. Neri was the main character. She was around 17, 18 and she was meant to be this alien from a planet that was entirely an ocean and she could breathe underwater. I used to wake up early just so I could watch the reruns. It was the only time I ran home in my whole life was to watch reruns of Ocean Girl. I don't even remember the actress's name I probably should have looked that up before I made this video but I remember thinking like wow I just love her she's like the most beautiful person I've ever seen I used to fantasize about like going with Neri to the ocean planet and living together with her like everyone fantasized about this stuff I used to fully fantasize about Emma Watson like coming to my school and asking me on a date. Other notable crushes uh, include uh, Kelly Jones in the St. Trinian's movie played by Gemma Artenton. That first shot of her where she's leaning against the staircase and she's wearing that pencil skirt. She's so beautiful. Uh, honorable mention to just Karen Gillan. I'm still really gay for Karen Gillan. I actually hated Amy Pond, but I'm always grateful for Amy Pond because Karen Gillan. And I'm not saying that every like obsession that I had with a female character was like that. Those specific ones that I've mentioned were really formative in realizing I experienced romantic attraction to women that's the that's the tea yeah ghost i bored him to death look oh my god you guys ghost brought a dead bird into me today like i was i was just chilling here reading of monsters of men by patrick ness which i severely recommend i severely recommend it okay guys and legitimately he he dragged this bird this fully grown adult pigeon into my room and just started flinging it around everywhere. I had to bleach the floor in my room because I was paranoid about bird flu. So to any of my fellow LGBT plus followers, 
do you guys have any celebrities or characters when you look back on your life and you're sort of like, yeah, I really should have known that I was I was not straight when I was obsessed with that character. Um, because I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, give it a like or contact me on Tumblr. I'm actually working on setting up a Patreon. But in the meantime, I have put my PayPal into the description. You are more than welcome to donate however much you wish. Whatever amount that you can is really helpful to me. And I will see you next time. Lots of love. Bye. Thank you.